right now, we want to jump into our main discussion for the day this hour, which is on ending <coughs> modern day slavery. Uh, we want to talk about human trafficking and organ harvesting, right, um, with my guest here. So a lot of young people in this uh, century and in this country are picking the option of traveling abo abroad for um, career purposes. Um, living abroad you know trying to find opportunities there many of them are going in in ways that um are not necessarily even safe for them we just read the story of this young man who's fallen from a plane you know in search of better opportunities um but then what happens is for the ones who do make it across the borders a lot of them also find themselves as victims of abuse and other atrocities such as slavery and sadly even human trafficking yes in 2019 unfortunately this matter is significantly underreported making it hard for you know um, the necessary voices to rise up in fighting this vice and understanding its trends and patterns and that's exactly what I want to talk about with you guys so before we begin Mandy tell me about your program my body belongs to me well, my body belongs to me. It's an initiative. It's an initiative to create an awareness amongst the Kenyan youth and the children on the hazards of migration for jobs without information. Mm. The whole uh, idea is to instill in them that prevention is always better than cure and knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. So if you do not have knowledge where you are going, what you are doing, you make yourself vulnerable sure. to a lot of atrocities. Yeah. And then again, if you get into this kind of a problem, then to, you know, to get you out of it is a another big chapter right. so prevention is the first step and prevention comes when you and i individually take care of ourselves by having the right knowledge on how to respond to the environment okay so this advocacy program is a message it says my body belongs to me my body belongs to me it's you know physically nobody touches me outside internally nobody touches me inside and my dignity is mine okay. and that is for me my responsibility to protect it my responsibility to ensure that it is where it should be all right so we do this through advocacy programs through okay. creative advocacy you know, creative right. workshops and we'll be hearing a bit more about that later but um moses just before we go on break you know you're a community specialist what is your relationship with this with this topic what is it that you've seen you know is it something as you interact with different communities do you find a lot of young people just quickly seeking to migrate yeah. um, and find opportunities out there but then find themselves in these vices yeah uh, as he says, the, 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 the thing is that uh, people are in such of uh, better, better places for jobs, like uh, better, better opportunities out there, but they're not aware of uh, the risks out there. Because you find our people might uh, feel that if you go up there and you, do have, you, have an, you have somebody like a good father, then you're safe. But if you go there because you are, you are vulnerable, you didn't have a job, then you got a job there, nobody's protecting you. You become you yourself. You 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 take yourself as a as a as a as a as a, as a, as a criminal mm -hmm. doing that doing the, the same thing. You see, traveling without information, informing your people. So in so the communities you work with, do you find a lot of young people exactly, trying to find out exactly. those opportunities? Yeah, as a as a documentarist who also does a film with the organization, we are I'm, I'm part of the media team. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of coverage. I do a lot of. Uh, these uh, reporting and uh, recording stories of these victims, okay. the survivors of these. All so right. I do meet survivors on these yeah. issues, and uh, they really, they really like want to share their stories. Okay. Yeah. I'd I'd want to I'd want for you to share, you know, just some of what you've heard from those survivors when we come back from the break, and also just dive deeper into, you know, what is pushing, you know, so many of our young people into these situations, um, because at some point you do have to wonder. We've seen stories like these on the news. Is it a level of desperation? <coughs> We're going to touch on that after the break. And so stay tuned, guys. And of course, you can send in your feedback to double two triple nine. guys welcome back to full circle with Joyce now the practice of human trafficking is a modern form of slavery 
involving the illegal trade of people for the purpose of exploitation. The Walk Free Foundation, an anti-slavery movement founded in 2010, estimates that over 35 million people globally live in modern day slavery. Exact statistics related to human trafficking are however difficult to find as it is a clandestine crime where few victims and survivors come forward for fear of shame, retaliation, or a lack of understanding. Now, this is also within an article that is talking about um, a lady's experience um, having gone to seek employment <coughs> in, in Libya uh you know working for a couple there but she gets there she was told she's going to be a caregiver instead she ended up being a domestic uh, home worker in a house of 24 rooms and would have to work you know basically all day almost all night um they took her passport didn't pay her because they said she doesn't work well then she was taken into a slum area in the middle of the war and could not get her passport back unless she paid the agent three thousand <clears throat> how common is this story you know particularly for kenyans trying to seek opportunities abroad mandy kenya is actually a big passage for human trafficking is it it's a huge passage because it also has a port here yeah so we actually traffic as we speak there's a lot of trafficking happening and we're tra are we trafficking and our own people or is it a transit point from other uh, parts of Kenyans the continent? Kenyans as well as people from the neighboring countries, Ethiopia, Eritrea. You must have heard incidents of people, police, even intercepting a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, coming to your question, which was uh, how many people are getting affected. Now, if, uh, many people actually, as you said, statistics are not very clear. But... Um, in Libya, Libya particularly in 2017, what happened was more West Africa. Mm. Because West Africa people were more going to Europe and to go to Europe you go through Libya. Wow. And in Libya they were actually, U European Union suddenly stopped the borders because there were too much refugees. Mm -hmm. So these people gathered in Libya and they did not know what to do with them. So they started selling them off. Wow. So you see these were the young youth who were ambitious, aspirational. But the Libyan government was aware of this? Well, the, coming back to that, Libyan government ha was made aware. CNN did a footage of how people were being sold there mm -hmm. for $80, $90, $100. Wow. And it was done in like in the 12th century bidding. Hey, it's a good digger. Hey, it's a good car. It was terrible if you watch the footage. Mm. After that, the Libyan government was forced to give some answer. But you know, Libya has no proper government. That's mm -hmm. another problem. Mm -hmm. So any case, so they decided to investigate whatever. But these people were being sold not for farm work, not for labor, but it was a lot for organ harvest from living bodies. Wow. And as we all know, when there is organ donation with your consent, it's different sure. from when you have just suddenly sold and it's taken. It may not be taken in the right conditions. So it will be medical problems. It could lead to fatal incidents. So it's a, it's a big thing. It was like a Pandora's box, what CNN discovered. Right. So like as we speak, this trafficking is happening. So our message, you know, my body belongs to me actually started then because the whole endeavor was to put this knowledge back in people that, hello, wake up. Mm -hmm. It is good that you, you know, you have ambition. You're not one of the Kenyan youth or the Nigerian youth or any young boy who's saying there are no jobs for me in the country. Sure. So let me just go on alcohol and weed. So we appreciate, we admire your spirit that we want to go and get a future abroad. Right, right. And look what kind of a fantastic workforce we are losing. Yeah. So these are the people who are trusting blindly because they're desperate. Mm. And in the process, because they do not have knowledge further than that, yeah. and they don't see the horizon further than that, they're getting into trouble. Uh, Mandy, I'm going to come back to you in a bit because these people are going through agents. Correct. Who surely should be known at this point, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So I'm going to come back yes. to you to touch on that as far as why is it that these agencies are still in operation yes, because they're the ones getting them yes. there in the first place. But Moses, coming to you then, you know, as a filmmaker, you, you mentioned hearing some of the stories from survivors because literally that's what it is now. This is life and death survival. Yeah, okay. what, what are some of the most harrowing stories you've had or, or experiences that you've heard? Uh, I just start with torture, maybe. Torture? Because, yeah, because uh, I have friends, I have uh, survivors who went through, like, torture. 
that you are being you make a mistake of maybe moving out of a house that you've been working in for years or for maybe some months maybe you are fed up with the situation there then you're being arrested with the same people then they also they they like these people like organize the the, the, their own cells for these people working mm. for them you see mm. so I have, I have different stories of different survivors okay. who are saying that they they even fear reporting this because they look like they're criminals in, sure. in, in the first place you see okay so mine is uh we as my body belongs to me initiative i'm using pictures and uh, videos to like share these stories like to to to, to keep these survivors like sharing their giving their stories to right. other people so that they can be aware of uh, the, aware the, the of dangers of everything yeah that's mandy these agencies i'm sure they are known by this point where people are going how is it that they're still in operation no it's not that simple because these agencies obviously they, it's they're not known they're they operate in a different way there are recruitment agencies which recruit for people right mm -hmm. now how do you know who's doing what but the government of kenya has actually i think in 2010 2011 had come down with rules that you have to register and you have to have numbers and you have to have approval before you recruit to take people abroad mm -hmm. but you see we can put a system that like that which is great at least we've put it but to keep it in to implement it and keep it going is another another issue so sure. you know so you there are always mushrooming agencies and there are always people desperate to look for a job and a poor person who really doesn't see any future when you give him a passport and an air ticket what do you think he thinks right so i mean you're doing this as an individual as an organization an initiative just you know really fed up with this story yeah. and stepping out what is our government doing about it because ultimately when they're kenyans abroad like it is our government to protect us right yes government has made attempts government has really really made attempts but you see each one has to step in you me airlines border every it's a you it's a mammoth thing mm -hmm. but what what I mean, I would suggest is that the government knows that we cannot stop it at one end. It's going to happen. So the embassies at different countries should be more, uh, you know, trained and more if made more efficient to deal with this people who are coming in. Right. For example, like if you've gone uh, to Saudi Arabia with a job, so you should be having access to going, having the access to the embassy, maybe a desk which attends to people who come in for jobs mm -hmm. so that you register yourself there. You know that if you're in trouble, you can call the embassy right. and the embassy knows if something, if there is a query, where to find that person. Right. But firstly, we have to begin even with the people who are going abroad. They have to know they have this right. Right. These people who go uh, going outside, they do not even know what rights they have. Yeah. They do not like even don't know surrender your passport. They do <laughs> not even know what they should expect. Yeah. They do not even know what should they demand and from their own country or from the work. They completely lost, and that is why this my body belongs to me initiative was to give them that knowledge. Yeah. Because see, one like you highlighted some time back, what is the reason? Why are people migrating? One is economic reasons. We all know that. Poverty. It's, it's a hackneyed thing. Everybody will say poverty. Yes, there is poverty. But does somebody want to die? Does mm -hmm. somebody want to get into torture? So you see, poverty is a stimulant. But why are they going? Because they do not have the knowledge of what is happening forward. Yeah. So body, my body belongs to me initiative is just for that. To bring that knowledge. Everybody is not on internet. Mm -hmm. Everybody is not look, watching CNN. CNN only covered it. Yeah. The only local newspaper which actually covered here was Daily Nation. Mm. Others, there was hardly any media hype on what happened in Libya in 2017. Yeah. Even African Union did not do, uh, create the kind of, you know, noise it should have. Sure. People being sold. Yeah. But so how, if you how give you, them the knowledge. How are you giving this knowledge? I, I need to wrap up. But how are you giving this knowledge? Is it through training? Do you do yes. advocacy So we are visiting the uh, informal areas, schools, colleges, churches. We are talking to them. And we do it through a creative workshop. Okay. We do it through singing. That song is my body belongs to me. Don't touch me. Yeah. Respect me. We instill the sense of dignity. You know, Africa has got a lot more to see than Absolutely. just to sell us. Absolutely. And secondly, the thing that information is more important, no migration without information. Mm -hmm. And what is the information that you should seek when you get a job? I'm not saying don't take a job, don't look at a job abroad. That you can't do. Sure. But who is the agent? Yeah. Where is his office? Do you do Where diligence? are you going? Absolutely.
Wow, Mandy, I can totally feel your passion for this subject. It is a huge one, an important one, as you're saying. We've not paid enough attention to it, but thank you to you both, Moses, as well, for coming through to Full Circle with Joyce. Very quickly, how can people find you guys, either on social media or your website, if they want to support your work? Yes, please. We have a Facebook page called My Body Belongs to Me. We welcome everybody to come and register, to come and interact, and we would really welcome that because okay. he goes to the community, gets feedback. Yeah. We work accordingly on the feedback. Okay. So the more feedback we get, the, the more we can. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you both. Thank you both so Thank much for being much. here. And um, guys, we need to take a break now as we get ready for our second hour. But man, what a topic and how sad to hear that, you know, this is the reality. But guys, you know what? At the end of the day, your life is your own, right? Take charge. Do your due diligence, um, regardless of whatever things are like. Just do your best to find out the most information you possibly can can because the grass isn't always greener on the other side with that said we're going to take a break right now coming up next our change makers segment uh our hour as we focus in on lifestyle issues coming up at 9 a.m stay tuned <laughs>